Okay, how's everybody doing today? So I've got a review for you guys. It's a review slash travel montage type thing. So I'm kind of sort of combining two videos into one. But on the cruise, I took a Poco X6 Pro. Now this is a brand that's made by Xiaomi. And for what you get for the amount of money that you pay, it's actually a really, really good deal. So I've never had any experience with a Poco phone or a Xiaomi phone or any of the Chinese phones before. And I've got to say that what you get for the amount of money that you pay is insane nowadays. So... I'm going to put in some videos while I'm talking to kind of go through some of the pros and the cons of it. But first off, I want to say that the main camera that is in the Poco is a Omnivision uh, 64 megapixel camera. And I know a lot of people say that it's kind of a hit and miss, but I personally found that it actually did just fine for all of the use cases that I needed it for. And not to mention because now Android supports uh, raw video capture, at least you have to download an, an app called Motion Cam, uh, it's, it actually is really, really good. Now, here's the thing. I don't have the Poco X6 Pro anymore. I actually had to send it back to uh, Amazon. And I'll get into that as nothing to do with the phone. It actually has everything to do with AT&T and their total anti-consumerism ways that they want to do things now so but anyway let me get back into the cameras so like i said it's a 64 megapixel omnivision and it's it actually it did just fine for me now the app that i was using to record a lot of the video was it was called pro take and it's actually what i'm using to record this now um pro take is it has a lot of features like it's got a uh, log recording you can set the different bit rates and you can do um, rec 709 color space and that's actually what I used to record everything when I went on the cruise uh, we went on a cruise to uh, Honduras uh, Roatan uh, Costa Maya and Cozumel now on the Poco phone it has an ultra ride ultra wide camera and it has a macro camera the ultra wide it was okay for most things it did get a little noisy here and there and the macro camera was in my opinion opinion pretty much useless at t in 2022 they sent out a um what was it called a it was like a whitelist uh document and they put out all of the phones that are supposed to be so officially supported on their network people were still getting by with using a lot of the chinese phones and some of them you could still use even though they weren't approved and then they sent out basically like a network-wide update that disabled a whole bunch of phones and it's actually really freaking stupid because if it's an unlocked phone and it's supported on those bands i should be able to use it if i pay for a phone myself I should be able to use it on any network, no matter what, who makes it. If you want to get into politics with some of the bands on like Yahweh, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get into all that. But to me, I feel like if it's unlocked, you should be able to use it. Don't call it unlocked or don't say that you can use an unlocked phone on your network if you can't. And this actually happened all after they had their... Um, massive outage like they were out of service for two no 12 hours and so anyway if you look on reddit there was actually a hack that somebody was able to do where they could use the poco phone on at&t's network and then like three days after they implemented that uh, at&t sent out an update and even was disabling that so it's really freaking frustrating if if that was not the case i would still have the Poco phone because it had a lot of other really great things. So the battery life on it was fantastic. Like I could go probably a day and a half with moderate to heavy use and not have to charge it. And that was with me using the camera a lot 
And what I would do is actually just not plug it in at night when I went to go take a shower or do something else where I knew I wasn't going to use my phone. I would just plug it in the charger and it would be plugged in maybe 15, 20 minutes and be at 90, 95%. And I was totally fine with that. Now, one of the things that I didn't like is it had some sort of hardware limitation with the audio recording and video. And even if you downloaded a audio recording app, all of the audio that was recorded on the phone, regardless if you use an external microphone, an internal uh, video, any type of audio recorder that you would download, all of the audio was capped at 128 kilobits per second. And usually that's not a huge problem because some older iPhones used to do that and it still sounded fine. They had like some sort of hardware noise reduction or some sort of hardware uh, limitation that just it didn't make it sound quite right and that was one of the downsides that I didn't really like I could get around it if I was going to use that phone long term but I felt like with the main camera it just in my opinion it looked really really good for the amount of money that it cost and I actually ended up getting the 512 gigabyte version because I was actually going to do a lot of the uh, raw recording because that takes up a absolute crap ton of space. So the reason why I ended up getting a Poco X6 Pro is because my wife ended up damaging her phone at work. And me, her, my whole family, we all use iPhones. And she was saying how she really missed it. She really wanted an iPhone back. And the damage that she had done to her iPhone, it was going to be extremely expensive to fix. So I ended up giving her my iPhone and that's why I ended up choosing the Poco X6 Pro because it was a good cost compromise between uh, the amount of storage that I got because most phones nowadays, unless you're Sony, which those are stupidly expensive, they don't have micro SD card slots anymore with a decent camera, except for Sony, like I said. So that's why when I ended up choosing it, I'm going to end up doing another video where I actually do like an actual travel style video because I didn't really vlog a lot on this trip. I still, even though I've done YouTube for a couple of years now, I still feel kind of shy trying to vlog, vlog in public. And there was just so many people on the ship that I didn't really find a lot of good opportunities where I felt comfortable vlogging and it was my first cruise which i i had fun uh i think all my family had fun i hope they had fun yeah so like i said if it wasn't for at&t and their whole debacle and all of their bs i would still i would have actually kept the poco x6 pro what i ended up getting instead after i returned that i got a pixel 7 pro which is what i'm using to record this now I've never had any experience with Pixel phones, and this one was actually on, it was a used phone that was on sale for less than $300, and I ended up getting that, a case, uh, screen protectors, and that's what I'm going to be using for from here on out, because because it's Android, I can still do the raw recording. People rave about the Pixel uh, photos, so I'm going to give this a try for a while and uh, see how I like it. sirens in the background if in the future by some mysterious uh act of whatever that exists out there at and is like oh now you can use chinese phones or whatever phones because i would really like to experiment with some of the one inch sensors that they're putting on phones now like i know yahweh has it uh what's the other one oppo has them xiaomi has them which xiaomi is absolutely can't use them at all on at t now so it really sucks yeah i hope you guys kind of enjoyed this i don't have the physical phone to show you because like i said i had to send it back so just trust me all of this video that you're seeing uh in this video all of the video that you're seeing in this video was recorded with the x6 pro using pro take at rec 709 color space most of it was manual sometimes it was auto exposure and the noise reduction was turned off. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's kind of rambling, jumping back and forth. I'll try to put it all together in a nice, concise form. So, yeah.